Hi, this is Salman Alana in Manos Prilakis, and this is case 199 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case in which not only were we unable to recanalize the CTO, but we also had a complication. The patient had a refractory angina to medical therapy and a right coronary artery CTO. The angiogram shows a flash osteal occlusion of the RCA with heavy calcification. There are previously placed stents in the proximal and mid-right coronary artery. And then the posterolateral and PDA are filling through both septals as well as epicardiac collaterals from the circumflex. This is another look at the collaterals. There are some septal collaterals and some epicardiac collaterals from the obtuse marginal. So our plan here was to go with the primary retrograde approach because we were unable to engage the CTO vessel. It was a flush aortoosteal occlusion, in which cases going retrograde is often only the only way. And we thought that the epicardia collateral was highly complex, very small and tortuous vessels, so we did not think it was going to be a good idea to try to go retrograde through the epicardial. The occlusion had a, a long length and the distal vessel was diffusely diseased. So we first tried to go retrograde. We advanced a microcatheter into the first septal and tried to do surfing with a Sion Black guide wire, which um, unfortunately did not make it down to the PDA. It was um, making some progress, but then could not be advanced any further. So after we tried for a few minutes, we decided to perform an injection and better understand the course of the collateral. And we see here that there is a very tortuous course we have uh, multiple bands, and then eventually this collateral comes all the way to the right posterior lateral. So we went back in and tried a SUO or three guide wire that is uh, very soft with a 0 0.3 gram tip. And we made some progress. We were able to advance it partially inside the collateral. But unfortunately, even after delivering the microcatheter further down, we were actually unable to cross all the way into the right coronary. We then switched for another collateral. We did uh, surfing through the uh, third septal collateral. But once again, the wire seemed to be going um, in a different uh, orientation. It's going more towards the apex and would not take uh, the band back uh, towards the right coronary artery. So after multiple attempts, we um, pulled the wire back. And actually, we saw that there was some staining from the previous attempts to cross through the septal collateral. We tried another. Uh, septal crossing, but uh, once again, the wire does not make it all the way. And one another, you know, one more thing we noticed here, which actually was present in the previous film, but sometimes it's hard to realize when we're focusing so much on a specific portion of the angiogram, is that there was an area that looks suspicious in the left main. So we have essentially a flap. It looks like a left main dissection. We did intravascular ultrasound to better understand what is going on in the left main. And uh, we can actually see here that there is some tissue, it looks like a flap, inside the ostium of the left main. So this is a left main dissection. The patient was very stable, there was no compromise in flow, but still we did not want to leave it untreated, so we placed a 4.5 by 12 millimeter onyx frontier stand. And this gave a nice result, both by angiography and also IVUS, so that there was good coverage of the left main, essentially going all the way out into the yard. At this point, we gave up on retrograde crossing attempts, and we tried to see if we can find some nub to engage in the undergrade direction. So we used multiple guide catheters, AL1, AL0.75, 3D right, AR1, 3D RC, but unfortunately we were unable to find a stump. It appeared that the occlusion was at the uh, aorta without any stub. Then we discussed about the potential option of going retrograde. There is this very small epicardial collateral that um, wraps around and then goes into the posterior lateral, and we debated about whether we should um, go through this vessel, but it was very small, there was significant tortuosity, and we did not think that the potential risks of going through this collateral outweighed the potential benefits in terms of symptom improvement.
And this is something that should happen, of course, before every CTO-PCI, but also should be a dynamic process throughout the procedure. In our case, we thought that the risk was acceptable going through septals, but then when we change our strategy to go through epicardials, then the risk changes, which changes the risk-benefit ratio. So we came to this situation in which we've tried whatever we could, and now we are at the point where we've exhausted our options. We said we will try retrograde through septals. We tried through several septals. We were unable to cross. So we've exhausted our options and we're not willing to go retrograde through epicardials because the risk involved does not justify the potential benefit. So that's why we stopped. So several lessons from this case. The first one is that aorto-osteal flus CTOs can be difficult to recanalize. And uh, if there is inability to engage that vessel, the only way to recanalize this is essentially by going retrograde. Second is that the risks and benefits of the procedure should be continually assessed. So in this case, we tried retrograde through septals, which we thought had a favorable risk-benefit ratio, but that was unsuccessful. So the only other option we could think of was to go retrograde through an epicardial collateral, but because this collateral was very complex, small and highly tortuous, we did not think that uh, the risk involved would justify the potential benefit, and that's why we stopped. Third, here we had a complication. We did have a dissection of the left main. It was a non-flow limited dissection, but it was critical to diagnose and treat before leaving the cath lab because it could lead to adverse consequences afterwards. So this was an unsuccessful case that also had a complication, but the patient had an uneventful recovery and went home the next day. CTO-PCI is challenging and failure is always part of the game. And we should never forget that the patient's best interest should come first. If in a case it was just that the potential further attempts to open the CTO carry too much risk in relation to the potential benefit, then stopping is the best way to go. Thank you.